This is one of those um, segments that has a lot of visuals. So if you're uh, washing the dishes or like doing some other thing, this is one that's worth seeing. Uh, because they've got access to his house now. And the house, you can tell from the outside, is designed to look like a palace. It kind of looks like a cross between a palace and a bank, maybe. I don't know. Um, it, the building is clearly being remodeled. Um, it's being renovated. But all the stuff is there, including all his art stuff. There's a huge rack of gigantic paintings. Look at the size of them. They're like mural-sized paintings, but in big gold frames. There's also a whole other rack of paintings that appears to all be just portraits of the same woman. I think that's all portraits of the wife. There's also a closet full of designer clothes for her. Um, there's also a weird room full of boxed jewelry and boxed trinkets and things. I'm not totally sure what some of those things are. Uh, there's a room full of antiques, including like certificates of authenticity for the various antiques. So that's what's inside. But it, then you go outside onto the grounds, and this is weird. It's like this, it's kind of waggling around a little bit in the breeze. What's that? It's covered in military camouflage netting, so it really isn't e easy to see what that is. Presumably, that makes it not easy to see from above. But honestly, it's even kind of hard to figure out what it is from the ground, as you can see here. Well, if you pop inside, as that guy does, you can see what is in there. What's in there? Oh, my God, look. It's a fake train station. Now, to be clear, this is not a real train station. There are no railroad tracks that lead into or out of this thing that looks like a little rail station. It's like, a, see the benches and everything and the little lamps? It's a, it's a replica, a train station replica. But sitting on the fake tracks at the fake train station in this guy's yard is a fake train car, a personal fake train car. And look, these guys, it's so sweet. They put on plastic boot covers so they won't mess up the carpet when they go in. Uh, but then they go in and look at it. This train car, it's like the Orient Express. It's all red velvet and hand-carved hardwood and gold. Everything that looks gold actually is gold. And this isn't like some lovingly restored antique because this guy just loves the classic era of train travel and, you know, some rich guy rescued and restored this old train car. No, this is apparently a newly built thing. It's a fake Pullman train car inside a fake train station stuffed with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of gold fittings and expensive silver. The, the coffee machine is gold plated. The crystal tumblers have the seal of the Russian Federation on them. And you know this is coming. You know this is, <laughs> you know this is coming. Yes, there is a gold toilet uh huh, with a gold holder for the toilet brush. There's a gold hose on the bidet, which is like a little, uh, a little rinsy thing for your business end. Does the hose for that really have to be gold, given its function? Really? Yes, yes, everything must be gold, including the thing you squirt. This is just astonishing. I mean, this this astonishment, <laughs> this thing with the gold everything and the, the stained glass ceiling inside the fake rail car and the gold crests everywhere that are real gold. This belongs to this gentleman. His name is Viktor Medvedchuk. He is now under arrest in Ukraine, having previously been charged with treason. This train car parked in his yard in the fake train station parked in his yard was reportedly a gift from his wife sometime last year, a birthday present, a little special thing for him to play with. Viktor Medvedchuk. Do you by any chance remember um, that when candidate Donald Trump hired a campaign chairman in 2016. For whatever reason, he chose this guy, Paul Manafort, a man with whom he had no prior relationship. Paul Manafort, for years, had been working overseas, getting paid by Putin-connected corrupt oligarchs to install Putin-connected corrupt politicians in positions of power in the nation of Ukraine. Um, that, that book I wrote called Blowout is about how Putin weaponized oil and gas and corruption to try to keep Ukraine and other neighboring countries weak and dependent on Russia and under Putin's thumb. Well, when Donald Trump inexplicably hired Manafort to run his campaign in 2016, that was what Paul Manafort specialized in, weakening other countries by installing compromised, corrupt Russian puppets who would do Putin's bidding in the political leadership of other countries.
right? That was what he was doing for a living. And then Trump hired him. Weird. Why would we want that in America? What a weird skill set to bring to an American campaign. <laughs> anyway, but in Ukraine, in his work in Ukraine, Manafort's most famous client was the Ukrainian prime minister he got elected there, a pro-Putin puppet named Yanukovych. Yanukovych, you might remember, fled to Moscow when Ukrainians rose up and threw him out of office. And you might remember from segments here on this show that after Yanukovych fled, the Ukrainian people started going into his various houses and palaces that he had all over Ukraine. And that's how they learned that he, too, had gold toilets. What is it with these guys? At least I mean, Yanukovych had a toilet with weird gold, like, lizardy feet and a gold flusher, and yes, a gold bidet for the squirting. <laughs> Yanukovych also had a private zoo. Um, in his case, he didn't have a fake gold-plated personal train car like Medvedchuk. Yanukovych instead had a fake gold-plated personal Spanish galleon that he floated on his private lake and used as his own private restaurant. Classy, these guys. Oh, well, Yanukovych is gone, fled back to Moscow. Uh, and now it's Viktor Medvedchuk, the man with the gold-plated fake train car, who's, as of this week, under arrest in Ukraine for treason. He was also one of Paul Manafort's guys in Ukraine. Medvedchuk is one of the richest men in Ukraine. He is linked, obviously, to the Russian government. He has always worked for Putin's interests in Ukraine. He was part of the whole operation that Manafort ran to install Putin-connected puppets in positions of power in Ukraine. Putin is godfather to one of Medvedchuk's daughters. It was therefore unsettling when we learned that Medvedchuk had been one of the Trump campaign's contacts in 2016, when Russia was intervening in our election to try to help get Trump into the White House. But now the Ukrainians have arrested Viktor Medvedchuk. They have taken his assets, uh, including the train car. They've taken his assets and those of all the other oligarchs who are working for the Russian Federation inside Ukraine. Ukraine announced today that just from Medvedchuk alone, they have seized 30 plots of land, 23 houses, 32 apartments, 26 cars, and one yacht. And presumably that one fake train car and its bedazzled golden hose for squirting water up at the caboose. Just as Russian oligarchs the world over are having their yachts seized and their assets frozen, Ukraine, too, is trying to free itself of what Russia has been doing to them by weaponizing corruption to create these powerful, rich, pro-Putin power centers inside their country to keep their country corrupt, weak, destabilized, dependent on Russia. But today, a big new step. Today, Europe, the European Union, finally took the first step toward actually pulling the plug on Russia's power, toward actually dismantling Russia as a state, at least as the kind of state it is now. Because the European Union today began drafting a measure that would ban the purchase of Russian oil and gas. If there is one thing that could end Putin's Russia as we know it, it would be that. Will they really do it? 